I'm the first black woman to receive a PhD in physics from Yale University. And I'm really indebted to those that help pave my way. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. It's just amazing to me what you've become. You're a doctor. <laughs> Thank you. My grandmother had limited opportunity growing up. And through her hard work, only two generations later, I'm at Lawrence Berkeley Lab working among Nobel laureates and answering big questions, hopefully. <laughs> so in the lab day to day, I'm working on the design of a new type of detector to measure these elusive particles called a neutrino. Despite their elusiveness, neutrinos may be the key to understanding why the universe evolved in the way that it did. I'm really hoping that this current experiment will be one for the record books. Physicists in general are imaginative in that we seek to make the measurements that never have been made before. Engineers typically give us a little bit of a hard time in that we're, you know, daydreaming about doing the impossible, but sometimes we make it work and that's when, you know, revolutionary measurements are made. How is it that something that's smaller than the width of a human hair can have impacts on the entire planet. As a microbiologist, I study some of the smallest living things on Earth. I study bacteria that live in soils. Many antibiotics are produced in nature by soil bacteria, and we know how these antibiotics work from a health perspective, but we really don't understand what they're doing in soil. We can't make a prediction about how something will respond to an environmental change, say a warming climate, without understanding how the small pieces fit together. We need soils to continue to feed our planet. That's a huge motivator for this work. There's always an urgency to science as a practice that lets us examine the world, ask questions about it, and try and make it better. Hey there, little frog. This is my favorite frog. It's great getting to work with this really cool and charismatic species every day. As a neurobiologist at Stanford, I study how the infant brain works, but I do this in poison frogs and their tadpoles. With every visitor to their nursery, tadpoles make a life or death decision on whether or not that visitor is someone that can feed them or someone that is a predator and potentially wants to eat them. And the tadpole makes a decision and then will beg for food by doing this really rapid body vibration. These tadpoles are great because they're translucent during development, and so we can actually see their brains developing. I love using art to communicate my science. I draw cartoons and comics of the animals that I work with, and I can use those to tell stories about the research that I do. The biggest contribution I want to make in my career is getting other people interested in science. There's a lot of room for individuality and self-expression in both chemistry and music. Once you master the basics, you can start asking the question, how can I change this to make it more interesting? As a materials chemist, I'm trying to discover something that can improve the electronics of the future. All the cell phones and personal electronics we use today are based on a technology called the transistor, which was invented back in the 1940s. What I'm trying to create in the lab is a material that could replace transistors for next generation electronics. Knowing that the materials we're making in the lab could one day have an impact in enabling new technologies is really exciting. It's also really fun to be surprised constantly by chemistry, by what these materials do. Part of the reason my science is so fun is that in addition to being in a lab and doing chemistry and experiments, which I love, I get to work in these beautiful places and to know why it's so important that we understand them. 
A lot of people hear biogeochemist and they think it sounds like three scientists in a trench coat or something, but it's actually one field and it boils down to understanding how ecosystems work. I think about the way carbon and nutrients cycle and move through ecosystems like tropical forests or deserts, and I also think about how human actions affect those cycles. Ooh, nice. It's a really powerful tool for us to break down super complex and pressing environmental issues like climate change into things that we can measure. We don't exist in isolation from these places. We rely on them for clean air, for clean water, for the food that we eat. And it's critical, it's foundational that we understand the way that they work and how they're predicted to change in the future. Diverse voices are not just helpful to science, they're an absolute necessity in good science. To date, there are something like 100 black women with PhDs in physics, full stop. I'm lucky to work with physicists and engineers from all over the world. It doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, we love doing what we're doing and that's what unites us. The world needs science. And science needs women. Because women in science have the power to change the world.